The thing that makes a discus tank a little different when it comes to trying to do an aquascape is that most aquascapes where you see the beautiful planted layouts are usually going to be between 76 and 78 degrees. But in this case, because discus prefer warmer water, a discus tank is going to be between 82 and 86 degrees. So trying to find plants that actually thrive in those higher temperatures from among the wide variety of plants that are used for aquascaping is a little bit of a challenge. A lot of people that are very experienced in the hobby have already posted a lot of information, blogs going all the way back 10 years, videos, etc. And so I've kind of compiled a list of plants uh, that I've gleaned from all of that information out there that do well in the higher temperature range. And I'll be posting a list of those plants in a little bit. Okay, for starters, when it comes to doing the hardscape layout, you don't really want to play around inside an acrylic aquarium because they scratch so easily and on top of that they don't really have open tops as much as a solid top with a couple of openings where doors are typically placed. So it's not like a lot of the uh, glass uh, rimless tanks that you see aquascapers working in. Uh, so you don't want to scratch, you want to make sure you have plenty of space. It's best to get your design figured out prior to putting the hardscape in the aquarium. So we're going to do it on this workspace. And these two blue lines right here basically tape off a four foot space. This bench that I'm standing behind is already two feet from front to back. So that gives me the internal dimensions of my aquarium. So I know that I can work within this space and then uh, go from there. My aquarium is drilled up here for the return of the filter. And all the water is going to be kind of flowing this way and then back down around this way to the intake to go back to the filter. So based on the water flow direction in the tank as well as kind of the intuitive left to right reading mode that we have in our minds, I'm going to design the layout so that the movement kind of goes this way. So the first piece of hardscape we're going to start with is the world's most stubborn piece of driftwood. I've had this thing soaking in a barrel uh, with a heater and a pump for over a month. I think I've had this thing soaking for five or six weeks now and it still floats. I was soaking it so that it would saturate and stop floating and I even drilled through in some of the more inconspicuous areas so that I could allow water to get inside uh, the denser, thicker pieces of the wood. They are both stubborn. And after soaking this for a month, when I went in to do the drilling, the wood that was coming out from the drill was bone dry. So this is super dense. The water's just not soaking through. It's a little bit too big to boil. So what I'm gonna do is probably resort to anchoring it to a piece of plastic light diffuser grid like I have in all my previous aquariums. So when it comes to the placement of this wood, because I kind of want my movement to go from here to here, centered a quarter over from the left side of the aquarium and all tilt it so that, or twist it so that, uh, there's some depth between the front of the aquarium and the rear. If I do it too much, I don't really kind of get that nice directional movement. So if I do it just a little bit like that, uh, that's kind of feeling right to me. So this is kind of how we're going to do it. And looking down, from the edges, I can tell that there's plenty of space between the wood and the acrylic of the aquarium. And I'm probably going to end up removing this little piece over here. So that's kind of about how I want it positioned right there. Centered in terms of front to back, about a quarter of the way over on the center from the left side. And angled so that there's plenty of space between this piece right here and the front panel of the aquarium so that there's plenty of depth. Okay, before I arrange the stones, I want to talk about the stones themselves. 
They come from a canyon area in Ruidoso, New Mexico, and my family likes to go there uh, when we can and enjoy it out there. So uh, living in Texas, it's nice to bring a little bit of Ruidoso back. Now, you know you can't just put any kind of stone in your aquarium because you can have a negative impact on keeping the pH at the level you need it to be at. Um, if you put the wrong kind of stone in an aquarium, it would typically cause the pH level to rise. Uh, this is a pretty inert stone though. It passes the vinegar test. Uh, you don't see any bubbles or anything like that. And it really kind of has the look and feel of slate. So it should be quite safe to use in the aquarium without having any negative impacts. So that being said, um, another thing I like about this stone is that it's really dynamic in color. And uh, this one's been wet and these are all dry and you can kind of see the difference. These will really tone up and a lot of the color that you don't see right now comes out when they get wet. Um, another thing about these stones is the shapes of them I like. So I like, uh, you know, a lot of these lines. There's a lot of really cool angles and planes on them and uh, just a lot of, you know, interesting kind of grooves and stuff like that so they just seemed interesting and so I selected them from among all the stones I saw. They're fairly uniform in color though there is a lot of color in these stones. There's reds and blues and greens and purples. I mean there's really a dynamic range of colors and patterns in these stones but overall they all have those similar characteristics so none of them are going to stand out from one another in any kind of abnormal way. So I've got three large stones and three smaller stones and one of the goals I want to try to accomplish with the layout of the stones is to kind of terrace from a higher level in the rear of the aquarium down to a lower level in the front of the aquarium. And using these stones as kind of a central line, I can build up the substrate higher behind the stones and then in front have a lower level of substrate. That way there's kind of a higher build up area back here, sloping down to a lower plain area down here. And to the eye that gives kind of a sense of depth. And uh, that's generally a good thing to do. And I'll probably also have it built up a little higher here in this back corner and slope down this way, as well as have it higher in the rear in general and have it sloping down this way. The approach I'm going to take with these stones is to start with the largest stones, get those into position, and then find a nice little place for the remaining smaller stones to kind of uh, mainly accomplish the purpose of helping with that uh, terrace that we're trying to build. So starting with this stone, one of the larger stones, I chose this spot because as you see there's kind of a nice sloping movement here. And then I like these lines right here and then it slopes down and then goes down again. So kind of the shape and the size fills this corner nicely. And I like the way that it carries this kind of sloping movement down. And then uh, behind this stone will be some nice areas where I can build up the substrate because it'll act like a barrier, uh, like a retainer wall almost. And then above this level, after I put in the substrate, I can have some plants growing in through here. As I place each piece of hardscape into place, I like to step back, take a look, and make sure I like the way everything's going. And so adjustments are a very common thing through this process, and you'll notice that this piece of wood is now moved further to my left or to your right from your perspective. And uh, I think it looks better this way. So now that the wood is kind of placed one third of the way over from the left side of the tank rather than a quarter of the way over, it makes it look sort of less hidden behind this stone. It looks less crowded and it opens up more space and uh, you can see more of the, the texture and shape of the wood. And I think overall it just has a better balanced feeling. Now that the stone's in place, the way the wood looks totally changed. And uh, you'll notice that as you add each piece of the hardscape uh, into position, it actually continues to change the dynamic and the interplay of all the pieces together. Okay, I've been playing with this for a while and I ended up placing the two remaining large stones here and here. Uh, this is working out nicely. 
as you can see there's kind of a shape like this and that kind of matches the contour of the wood right here so I can place this over like this and that's actually probably going to help me hold this driftwood down just like so if I can keep this rock stable so place like that that may help this driftwood stay in place and keep it from wanting to float as it continues to absorb the water from the aquarium over time and then this piece I like here because it'll help serve as a retainer wall that'll work with this piece of driftwood and this area back here will be able to sustain a higher level of substrate and then uh, this piece and this piece I just thought placing it here would help uh, with the same same kind of idea where I can put in some substrate up to here and have some plants coming out in this area have some plants coming out from up here a little higher up and then this stone I really just like the angle and the shape of it so I'm kind of placing it out here on its own a little bit to kind of break up the uh, monotony or whatever uh, not to have too much of a contrived appearance to the line that we're creating so this this just kind of breaks things up a little bit gives it a little bit more of a believable feel so overall I really like this uh, layout um, it's nice and heavy on one side and allows for taller plants to be back here we can do some interesting things with some mid-ground plants and these kind of nooks and crannies between the rocks and then have a nice carpet filling this entire area nice and open because we're going to have some space for those discus to swim around we can take some other plants and have it growing on the wood as well and we'll talk about what those planting selections are in just a little bit so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take some photos of this layout so that i don't forget what i've done and then i'm going to take those photos and use those to start editing in mock-up of the plant placement based on the selections something just wasn't feeling right so uh you know i kind of remembered one of the things i've heard and that is use an odd number of stones in your layout um, and it's not just the number of stones but it's really just kind of this this is the same height here and that was just uh, that was bothering me so i had to figure out what am i going to do to maybe remove one of the stones and i took this and I just thought, you know, I think that's much better. So we're going to delete this guy. Stones have been known to move and trees to speak. You're so deep. <laughs> <laughs> 